thank you for that lovely welcome. I'm very glad to be back with a brand new magic series, ladies and gentlemen. I, in the next few weeks, I'm going to try and baffle and astound you. And if at any time during the series, you can spot how any of the tricks are done, mind your own business, would you? No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. If you do spot, if you do spot how it's done, write to me, tell me how the trick's done, and if you're correct, I shall be very happy to accept £100 from any charity of your choice. <laughs> We have a lovely studio audience here. I think they've just come in for the sit-down, actually, because it's a bit wet for gardening, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the, uh, they were very unlucky with the terrible wet weather for the big match on Saturday. A great shame, though. Mind you, it was their own fault. They should have known that the cricket season started, shouldn't they? <laughs> Perfect cricket weather. Well, there's somebody knocking, and I know it can't be opportunity, because that was last week. Come in, will you? Come in. Alistair, ladies and gentlemen. Alistair, my old friend. <laughs> If this is a Christmas present, it's a bit late, isn't it? It's for you, Mr. Nixon, special delivery. For me? Yes. I haven't had a present for a long time. Do you think I could open it now? No. Yes. I can't wait to see. What's that? Ooh, another box. Another box. Oh, let's see what's inside here, Alistair. I see. And inside. And oh, another, another box. box. And inside this one. Guess what? And another box. And inside this. Oh no, another box. Do you box. believe it? What have I got in here? I have two guesses. I bet it's another box, yes. Yeah. Right. I know what's inside that one. What? Another box. Well, you're sort of right. Yes. As a matter of fact, it's a piece of wedding cake. Isn't it? Yes, a bit of wedding cake. <laughs> From Anita. What's that? And there's a little note here, and the note says, look in the first box. In the first box? This one? That's this one. Yeah, let's have a look. In the first <laughs> box. Nothing to it. You can do it if you try. It's not impossible. With the proper magic passes, this phenomenon surpasses any other little miracle with glasses. Oh, that's impossible. No. Which There was a time, you may recall, I passed you through a six-inch wall. Oh, yes, I remember it well. <laughs> and in another magic show, I floated round the studio. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> I remember it well. Anita, your dress was red chiffon. I raised you up on high, and then the dress was gone. And so was I. Thank goodness, you made me back in midair. And in your place was Alistair. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember it well. I know for certain you will engineer a grand illusion where I disappear. It's bound to happen, but I'm glad that we're together on the show again. We may experiment. 
experiment with something new, like a substitution for it, a kangaroo, or how do you fancy being sworn in two? I knew it! Here we go again! I'll arrange something strange. Watch it change to a present for a lovely lady. Tanya said to Oberon, it's, it's great, great to find ourselves together on the show, show again. again, together on the show again. Lovely to see you. Now, Lovely come and have a look. Do you like Miss Lax? I think you've got a super place here. Haven't they done it nicely it really for me? It is. And a bar? Yeah, everything thrown in, you know. Yes. They provided every... Well, practically everything. Uh, there's one bottle I had to provide myself because oh. it's very special. Oh, yes. And it comes from Norway. It's called... See? Finn John. Finn John. Finn John. Very special and full of surprises. Is it really? Does anything go with it? Yes, applause usually. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Look, I'll pour you out a little drop of Finn John and you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, all the way from Norway, Finn John.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. That was Pin John. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a hexagon. It's a hexagon because it's got six sides. Now, it's, uh, it's got more than two faces, which makes it a hexaflexagon. I'll show you what I mean. Because it's got many, many faces. They're all rather beautiful. This is a rather a, a special example of a hexaflexagon. On this face, we have the emblem of the magic circle. That is to say, the signs of the zodiac stylized uh, the 12 signs in a circle. That's the magic circle sign. Now, on this side, we have a magic triangle. On this side, uh, well, I don't know what that is, really. I suppose you could call that another magic triangle. And that's a whole jumble of letters. I don't know what they mean. I've never really been able to work that out. Just a lot of letters. These are the spots I get before the eyes when I try to work out what the letters are. And on this side, we have the top of an umbrella, and very seasonal, too. Over on this side, oh, it's those letters again. They drive me mad. And here we have, well, we have a flower that blooms in the spring for no reason at all. I just put that in for fun. And on this side, well, that's me worrying about all that jumble of letters. And this is what all those letters mean. So whatever you do, don't go away. I wanted you to have a look at the audience. They're a good-looking lot, and this beautiful set that we've built for them, sitting here under the stars, very romantic. And I've got a quick trick. The only excuse, really, was so that you could come here among the audience and have a look at them. I've got a piece of pyjama, but it's, it's really dressing gown called. Sir, you've got a kind face. Do you mind me saying sir? Yeah. Would you have a look at that? Give it a tug. Examine it. Don't be afraid to pull it, as long as you don't actually break it. All right? It's gone a bit thinner, hasn't it? And Adam, would you examine that handkerchief for me? Have a good look at it. All right? Now, I want you to hold one end of the pyjama cord. It really is quite strong. Hold, wrap it round your hand. Make sure you don't drop it. <coughs> wrap it once round. That's marvellous. That's marvellous. Hold it nice and tight. And would you, madam, wrap that one round your hand a couple of times to make sure... That's, that's wonderful. You're working very well. Right. Now, I'm going to take the handkerchief. Did we get paid? And, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, did I charge you for your ticket? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to tie the handkerchief around the rope, and I'm going to make another couple of knots over the top like this. There's one, and there's another. And I wonder if this lady behind me here, would you lean over and tie another couple of knots there for me? I'll hold your hand back. I'll have a look through. <laughs> just tie a couple more knots there. That's it. And I'll just have a little look through what she said. Can I read that letter? No, I'm not. Pull it nice and tight. Thank you ever so much. There's your handbag. Now, I am going to try and pull this handkerchief knotted right through the rope without undoing the, uh, uh, the knots, you see. It, it should work. Actually, no, it doesn't always work. There's a gap in the rope somewhere. Ah, it's just there. No, it isn't. That's where it is. <laughs> While you're, it's very, I'm sorry to make you work at this time of night. Uh, <laughs> all right, is it? They were genuine knots, weren't they? Thank you very much indeed for your help. Now, I've got a letter here I want to read to you. I didn't quite know how to announce our next artist, our next guest, uh, because they're very unusual. So I wrote and said, how do you want to be announced on the show? And I had a letter back, very nice. Dear Mr. Nixon, ours is a performance which typifies the culture of Gloucestershire, conjuring up all the pastoral peacefulness and the truly rural serenity of England's West Country. Yours sincerely, Shag Connors and the Carrot Crunchers. <laughs> What do you think of me copper? They got 200 boys. He's a great big farmyard cockle with his head up in the air. There's no crowd around him, and he hasn't got a care. He struts around the farmyard, seen him try his luck. He very near succeeded with a great big owl's breed up. He wakes up in the morning to a hundred hands a more. I've seen him with the old farm cart stretched out on the floor. He'll chase away the sheep dog if he sees him coming near. When he throws the flaps of hands, no, they haven't got much to fear. I'll tell to the farm your cockle when he's many, many wives. I know that I'm all right. I forget to farm your couple boys and I'll go through the night. I can to the farm your couple with these many, many boys. If I'd have been born with feathers on, I'd chase them for their life. But I am only human. 
human. I've only got one wife. Yeah. I've had a point or two. I chase her for a life. If she starts to get her, I know she's my Connors and the carrot crunches. We have a little clearing up to do now, so I'll tell you what's going to happen next while they're clearing up. Well fielded. You managed oh, to catch it, yes, I got it without accident. What shall I do with this? <laughs> Funny you should say that. I'll tell you what, I'll show you a trick with it, shall I? Uh, do you think she'd mind? Well, I don't know. All right. Do you think? That is, yes, it's not the cockerel, yes, is it? No, no, no it's not no, the cockerel, no. no. I could tell immediately. Yes. Well, I'll tell you right, what, it's very fortuitous that you should have arrived. I will show this lady I a trick with a handkerchief and an egg. There's one egg, enough. I used to do it with two, but I've found since that enough is enough. Ooh. Now, there's the egg. The egg, you enjoyed that one, didn't you? The egg goes under the handkerchief, and I'm going to hold it Twist it like that so that you can see the shape of the egg there. Is that all right? Have a little look. Inspect it. Thank you. Now, it's a funny thing with new laid eggs. I don't know what upset you, but you can hit them quite hard without breaking them. Quite hard, you see. In fact, you can do all sorts of funny things. Look, I'll try and push this hat pin right the way through and out the other side. See that? And another one right through. You've never thought of doing that, did you? <laughs> look, and one through there like that. And a, and a few more stuck in like that. That's what you might call a, a penetration. Uh, you might, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd rather you didn't, <laughs> but you might. Right, now I'm going to take them all out like this, take all the pins out like that, and that you've seen them through the, the egg. There's the egg in the handkerchief. Ah. Uh, Unhand. Uh, 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 I, 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 don't, I don't believe... I don't believe it, Mr. Nixon. That's not a real egg. You don't believe it's a real egg? No. All right, turn her away. I wouldn't like her to see this. Watch. <laughs> How about that? There you are. A real egg. Extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my next guest came down from Yorkshire for the cup final and he stayed over to do a special appearance on the show. When I tell you that he never stops talking, I expect you'll guess who he is. No, it isn't Billy Bremner. It's Les Dawson. Here he is. <laughs> Les. What's up? Hello, David. I didn't know it was still snowing in the frozen north. It's not snowing. I'm shed in the dressing with a wet leghorn. You see this? Look at it. Well, we're a bit uh, stuck for space. I'm not joking. There's so many fellows on this show. I've had my name taken twice. Oh. And that's the sort of joke that's keeping me out of the big money. How are you, David? Nice to see you. Well? It's always good to see you. So you're not wearing your wig today? Yeah. Yes, I am, actually. Oh. This is the bald one that I wore <laughs> for sympathy. Oh, now, Les, yeah. can I show you a trick? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can you trick. refuse? It would be churlish. It would be, be very churlish. Right. Right. I yes. will show you a trick. This is rather a good one, and it's... Oh, I know. This is what you keep your dandruff in. Uh, <laughs> no, but what a good idea, yeah. I think. Stop your falling hair. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm going to amaze you, Les. Really? I will... You're going to buy a drink? No. no, even better. <laughs> you rotten devil. I know. Even better. Than that. Booby traps his wallet. Sorry. <laughs> now look. Yeah. I've got a box here with two compartments. Don't put me on. With two compartments. I've never done it before. No. Now the one in the front yeah. has the compartment marked one, and it's empty. Mm. And the one at the back, this will astonish you with its novelty, is marked two, ah. and that's empty. Now that was very clever to mark them one and two, wasn't it's it? About the living room of a wimpy house. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now then, I'm going to put something in there, and it will duplicate itself. Really? Into compartment one, I shall place a pear from the oh. fruit stand. You're feeling fruity. Yeah. <laughs> Close the door. Watch carefully. Yeah. Turn it round. Take the pear out. And the, that's right. It's the magic mentor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and now open the front compartment. I've taken the pair out from the. You want me to open the front compartment? Yeah. Open number two. Yes. And there, it's duplicated itself. There is another two pair. Two Right. Now. It can save you a lot of money, this. Now, I know you like a, a, a little, uh, you know... No, oh, I like a drink. I'm not a, I'm not a hard drinker. I find it easy. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to show you how to save money. I used to tread grapes, you know, but I was caught sitting down on the job. No. 
That was terrible. Never buy, <laughs> never buy a bottle of champagne. No. No, buy a half a bottle and bring it to me. Uh, Look, uh, I'll show you what. Right. Let's put that half bottle of champagne. Just want you to put it in there. Yeah, in yep. there. And put the glass in with it. Put two glasses. Must have a spectacle. Uh, well, we're going to duplicate it. Now we we'll turn it round to number two. I'll take it out of here. There's the glass and the bottle. And you open number two there, open it, and you'll find that, yeah, that it's duplicated itself. So you, you are kind. Go ahead. See that? Oh, yeah. Astonishing, isn't it? Yeah. Go ahead. Love it. You are impressed, aren't you? Very impressed. Um, right. David, why don't you take a cutting from the side of your hair, put it in there, <laughs> and in 15 years you'll have a party. Well, it's right. I didn't come here to be insulted. Where do you normally go? Ba boom. Oh, I'm going to give it to him. Will that duplicate anything? Anything. Anything at all? Anything at all. Will it uh, duplicate money? Money? Yeah, of course. You got any money? Yeah, I've got my expenses. I got them this morning, tied around a brick. All right. How much have you got there? Five pounds? Five pounds. Let's have a look. Let's show everybody. Yes, one, two, three, four. Five pounds you've got. Fine. Yeah. Now we'll put that in the wallet. Yeah. Put it in the wallet. Yeah. Close the wallet and put it in compartment one and we'll double it. Right. As we did before. Right. We close that. We turn it round. Is your house keeping this? Good. Whoops. No, it's, uh, it's sliding about. We turn it round. Uh, wait a minute. I... Exterminate! Exterminate! Oh. Now, I just want to show you that it's still there. Look. Oh, was it captured? There it is. Still there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now then, we turn it round. That's it. I should take out your wallet and look. Ten pounds. Oh no. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it's disappeared. Well, it goes wrong sometimes. It does. What do you think? Yeah, VAT. Where is it? <laughs> well, you're all right. It's bound to be in the. It's duplicated, you see. Now, there, there it is. You see? You're all right. What's that? <laughs> well, you can't win them all. That's no good. Well, there's so many checks bouncing settings that the banks have got samplings. <laughs> Where's the notes? The notes, I thought you'd never ask. The notes on your piano, go and play it. I'll get me on back, I'll hide his comb. <laughs> <laughs> See, isn't it? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, few people. I'm, I, I meant to not tell him about the step. A uh, few people are aware that in the world of serious music, Les Dawson has made a name for himself, and he doesn't like it. Now, Sir John Barbarolli once said, Les Dawson's interpretation of Grieg's piano concerto reminds me of Semprini. It's so different. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here in the concert is Les Dawson. <laughs> Good evening. This is the first time I've worked in an antenatal clinic. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to be working at Thames Television. This studio reminds me of home. It's filthy and full of strangers. <laughs> I've just returned from a tour of Russia. I had to come home earlier than expected because of the language problem. Everything ends in off. <laughs> <laughs> However, despite the fact that I'm only here because I give stamps, I should like to prove that my act is incredibly versatile as well as boring by playing for you that memorable song that's ever in our thoughts. It is, of course, the unforgettable melody called Unforgettable. Thank you. Tonight does mark the anniversary of the death of one of Britain's great composers. I refer, of course, to Makepeace Twaddle, <laughs> the first man to discover that people wet prunes were never late for work. <laughs> he was also the first Scotsman to stand sideways on a haggis and strain bottle through his sporran. <laughs> he was a wonderful man. He stood six foot four, never smoked, never drank, and made all his own frocks. <laughs> He was born in a Paisley Truss warehouse and for many years relied on their support. <laughs> he came from a family that was sold poor up to the age of 15 and thought knives and forks were jewellery. <laughs> he never had any shoes. His father used to black his feet and lace his toes up. <laughs> 
once he left a scar. Even in later life, when he became a wealthy man, he still couldn't read a newspaper unless he was cut into squares with string through it. <laughs> when he realised he was scraping the bottom, he left home at... <laughs> he ran away from home at the age of 42 and got a job as a rabbi's assistant, but had to give it up, he wasn't cut out for it. <laughs> It was a sore point for many years, but when war was declared, he was dropped behind enemy lines with a length of rubber tube and some radishes. <laughs> the idea was to put the wind up Hitler. <laughs> he was captured by the Gestapo, and when they realised he was a Scotchman, they tortured him in the most fiendish manner. They nailed his foot to a plank and played a Jimmy Shan record. <laughs> He escaped with the help of a German farmer. He knew he was German because as he went through a field of cows, the fellow went, Achtung, Achtung. <laughs> he returned home a broken man and fell in love with a missionary's niece from Bradford. It wasn't a happy marriage. She was so fat, she had a knickers on a prescription. <laughs> the marriage ended in disaster because one night she fell asleep on a waterbed and the house set on fire. And she was poached to death. <laughs> It was at this time that he wrote some of his finest music when Edmund Purden, the actor, was bitten on the thigh by a frustrated tomcat. Make Peace Twaddle wrote a hit song called Purden Me Boys at the Cat You Knew That Chewed You. <laughs> Tonight, to conclude this rather moving tribute to a wonderful man, I should like to play the piece of music that he wrote as he lay lying 20,000 feet up the side of Mount Everest on a two-inch ledge, carrying his lame donkey to safety on the back of the tuba through a snowstorm. <laughs> you and I would have panicked, but not make peace, he fell off. <laughs> Here is the song that he wrote as he lay dying in the arms of the Sherpa Porter in a working men's club at the bottom of the mountain. Thank you. <laughs> it's been said when I play the piano, there's one difference between myself and Chopin. He's been dead longer than I have. <laughs> Pods in a currant cake. <laughs> and the only advice that we could give was. <laughs> when he died. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Les Dawson, what a wonderful fellow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, swords like these were originally made, of course, for combat, but they are still used today, and magicians use them occasionally for sticking through cabinets with girls inside. Some performers swallow them, but my next guest uses them to fight the life out of me. You'll realize why when you meet Bevan Rayner. <laughs>
Um, Bevan Rayner proving that there's more than one way of getting your own back. And now with a song which might have been specially written for her on her big day, her wedding day, here's Anita Harris. Super song. Oh. Thank you very, very much. And I want to thank the bridegroom for lending you to us on this uh, oh, important day. Mike. And I think it's high time that Mike got you back now. So we're going to send you by container, by special Anita container. Alistair, may we have the Anita container? Here it is. Woo! And you'll enjoy this one, uh, I think. Right. Now, it's a very simple device. Of course, they use the car, aren't they? Now, I'm going to show you that there's nothing inside there. There are a few air holes, so that we're lucky to be able to breathe because of the next week's show, you see? And I've got to see <laughs> I know I've got to go in. I know you've got to go in. Oh, what else? With the balloon. Right. <laughs> Sit you down here for a start. Sit down. And put your feet over this way. Ladies, help. And would you... 
Would you think it was a dead liberty if I took your shoes off? Oh, well, I mean... Uh... It'll make it a little easier for the magic. Oh, right. Yes. All right. Yes. Now, are you nice and comfy? Um, yes, it's right. fine. We'll, we'll wrap you around like oh, that to make um, it nice and smooth for luck. Very That's very so that you'll remember us on the way. Oh, now, uh, <laughs> Les Dawson, uh, may we have the air cushions, please? Uh, we're going we're gonna to make it all <laughs> so that you don't get bumped to that. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Foolish fella. <laughs> the big one. Oh, the big one. The big basket over there. Come on. <laughs> well, we're going to close this first. Are you all right, darling? Yes. You all right? Yes, I mean, what, what do you want? Well, to you just lie down, darling, <laughs> and we're going to put the, uh, we're going to put these balloons oh, in yes. on top of you. Oh, I'm going to try not to smell you. Oh, I'm going to go. Oh, 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 The spiker. Right. <laughs> now we're going to lower the spiker in onto the balloons. All right. <laughs> you are. Right. Now take it up. Fine. Your blood and let the front and the sides. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be able to bring her back in time for next week. Les, and everybody on the show, thank Pleasure you David. for it. It's been Marvel. super to see you. Super to see you, mate. Come and say goodnight to the audience. Will do. Be See you next week. Bye now. <laughs>